there, my beautifuls. So, I'm filming in a little setting today. This happens to be my living room area of the RV. And I have my pretend fire pit. Um, it does give off a good amount of heat underneath. It's quite toasty. And there are two settings, high and low. And you could even run this with, um, without any heat, just for the fire look. I promise I am going to do a video on my motorhome and what it looks like, but not today. Today's video will actually be um, showing you my recent purchase, something that I'm going to be using for my work, and uh, yeah, so that's, I'm not a class one driver just yet been an interesting experience. I am going for my road test in a few weeks. Um, but um, yes, but this is just to prepare me for it. I will need it anyways. Um, I have the steel toed boots, which are a requirement for entering a lot of the trucking um, facilities. I have a safety vest. I have the, the gloves. Um, you know, gloves so you don't get your hands muddy and things like that. The only thing left, besides what I'm going to show you today, that I need is a hard hat. Oh, it's getting really hot now. <laughs> I need a hard hat and um, uh, safety goggles. And I will also be purchasing polarized sunglasses. That's for my own self. So, anyhow. Purchased this from Amazon, and it's a pair of overalls. sleeves I have a button at the sleeve here you could open and close and if you open it you could you could roll this up a bit if it's a hot day for example is black Now for the sizing, I might have purchased one that is much too big for me when I tried it on, even with tights and these two sweaters. I was still floating in this overall, but after I gave it much thought, this will be my winter overalls. When I'm going outside and checking the truck and the cargo, make sure it's secure. Where I will be wearing very thick pairs of pants underneath and thick sweaters like this because I don't want to wear this inside my truck. I will be taking it off. I don't want to sit around and, you know, do things inside my truck with the dirty overalls. So this will be primarily used to do things outside on the truck and uh, then I will take it off when I have to be inside driving. So, 
so it's actually perfect for winter it's a perfect size and for the summertime or actually spring and fall I ordered the same overall in the color green olive but get a little more comfortable um, but it's the small size the small and regular size and that will most likely be for the fall and uh, the springtime in the summer I think I'm going to go with a pair of overalls that are sleeveless and mind you this is only for when I'm overalls I'm only going to wear for when I'm outside doing pre-trips and securing loads and things loading and loading stuff like that I'm not going to be wearing them while I'm driving so. sleeves are really cute in terms of just the way it's laid out it has a little pocket here let me show you these pockets. I can put my phone in here. I can put some lollipops. <laughs> Just throwing some examples. you have a zipper and it's a really long zipper and alongside you have some clip buttons if I can get it on there we go they're actually fairly easy to put on. And then on the back of the overalls, you have another pair of pockets. Love the amount of pockets this has. You can put a lot of things in there. One of them has zippers and the other one does not. This one is just an open pocket and I don't know what I would use this one for. It would feel kind of unsafe but I guess we shall find out. And I noticed something at the bottom here. is not at the sleeve but at the bottom of the pen there's yet another pocket it's almost like a small piece of um, a knife or something that might go in there I'm not making any suggestions but what else would you, or maybe a wrench yes something a screwdriver maybe. They are fairly long, but once you put a pair of boots on them, and my boots.
boots sole is about this high. Uh, they fit just right for winter. I'm so excited to start driving. you quickly what happened with my road test on Tuesday. Okay. Um, long story short, I went, I made an attempt to take it, and I detected an air leak in the system of the truck. And it's funny because the person testing before me, um, that individual did not pass and I did speak to her when she came out of her test and she mentioned that I don't know there were a lot of things that were just weird and stuff and uh, she kept losing air so I didn't even think anything of it I thought that maybe um, she didn't do the things that she was supposed to so when I started my pre-trip um, on the truck for any of you out there who know a little bit about the way um, trucks with air brakes work. Um, when I was doing the air portion of the test, I realized that my truck firstly was not building enough air and fast enough. Um, secondly, when I fanned down, the low air warning did come up, come on above 60 psi, but um, once I lowered my air to 45 and 20 psi and even past 20 the spring brakes did not come on and the trailer brakes never dynamited sorry these are the only terminologies I know how to use so meaning that I found the whole thing odd and I was starting to doubt myself that I'm doing something incorrectly finally by the time my truck is down to 5 psi I had to physically put the spring brakes on the truck and the tractor on myself, which is a very unusual. So then, okay, I just ignored it, continue with, I didn't ignore it, I knew there was something wrong with this truck and I told it, the tester there's something fundamentally wrong with this truck, but of course he thinks I'm playing games, so he just ignores me. Once I get to doing my next test with the air, which is building air from 50 psi to 90 psi within three minutes. That portion was fine. But as soon as I got to the leak test, where you have to build air up to 100 and... Uh, it's normally 90, but I build it up to 110 psi, it doesn't really matter. Then you turn off your truck, then you wait for the gauges to press on the brake the truck and then you wait for the gauges to stop moving on the on the air the air gauges and then you time for a minute and see how much air your truck is losing now you're only allowed to lose a certain amount so if you're just bobtailing the truck you're only allowed to use 3 psi if you have a truck and a trailer it's 4 psi and a truck and two trailers it's 6 psi my truck lost 20 psi now, at that point, I was convinced that there's something definitely wrong with my truck. I redid the leak test in front of him because he thought I was pulling his leg. And uh, I lost about 7 psi second time. So then I told him, can you please go outside and listen for an air leak? And he did. And he said, I don't really hear anything. So then he comes back inside the truck and he said, let me build the air and let me do the leak test myself. So I move away and step outside. He steps on the driver's seat and while he's doing the leak test, I'm the one personally myself listening for an air leak in the system. At which point I happen to find it and point it. He steps out and he notices it too and he's like, okay. and. Uh, the CO is bubbling and you can clearly hear the air leak. Um, and he said to me, okay, what do you want to do? And I, told, he said, it doesn't seem like it's a big air leak. Do you want to continue? And I said, well, honestly, I would, I would uh, deem this truck as out of service, but 
we can continue with the pre-trip and see where that goes because with the pre-trip you're not actually driving the truck you're just checking the truck before you drive it so you can detect things like these so the air was built up to 110 psi right um i continue with my pre-trip i went outside i checked the whole trailer went underneath checked the brakes you know clearance light turning lights everything i come back in the truck ready for the next component of the test at which point I only have 50 psi in the truck and to lose that much air 60 psi in 15 to 20 minutes is not normal and he said to me you know what I think you're right this truck is out of service and I told him yep I thought so when I first started to build air with my first test um, now I'm pretty proud of myself that I found an air leak. Okay, that's like, I'm. That was it for me. I'm like, you know what? I passed already <laughs> in my head. Um, that gave me a confidence boost. The thing that kind of worried me is ooh, the driver, the, the potential driver, potential professional driver that was testing before me. She never noticed or mentioned anything. Firstly, secondly the teacher or the instructor or the tester he never said anything either now if I was testing a student and I noticed that there was some sort of a issue with the truck I would say something but he didn't even notice he actually didn't even notice until I pointed it out with all these tests that I was doing and now moving on to the best part now they have to reschedule my truck was out of service that same minute I couldn't continue with my test to make things even more laughable, I've been laughing my head off, is that I was at the school yesterday at the truck driving school to ask them when my road test will be rescheduled. And then at the same time, I inquired about the truck and um, what happened? How, how bad is the damage? I initially thought it was just an air leak and it needed to be sealed up or maybe there was a seal that was leaky. The gentleman at the school told me that apparently the whole air system had to be replaced. And I, I'm actually not really, I'm kind of surprised that it's to that extent. Um, he said, yeah, the, these trucks, the 2007 Kenworth trucks, it's actually time for them by the manufacturer that the whole air system has to be replaced. And he said it was very expensive and I was, thinking to myself well that's not really my doing I just found the air leak but um, yeah so you know I, I found an air leak but I did not think it was going to be to that extent that the whole air system and like I mentioned I noticed that the spring brakes and trailer brakes were not dynamiting even when I was down to 5 psi which is really unusual um, and even from the knobs, I could hear a little bit of air coming out from the tractor and trailer knobs. But uh, yeah, so that's how it went. My road test is rescheduled. I'll keep you guys on top of it and let you know how that goes. But um, yeah, I'm still really excited to be a truck driver, a professional truck driver and drive. I love driving big vehicles a lot. <laughs> I love it and I even love it more driving an 18 speed unsynchronized transmission which is where my passion is and eventually I would like to be a year from now I want my own truck and I want to be doing oversized loads that's where I want to be that's where I envision myself to be it's just primarily in oversized loads with my own truck an 18 speed manual transmission truck so i don't want to have to worry about going on a mountain and having brake fade i just want to put my truck in third gear put the jake brake on and go down an 18 percent descent not a problem <laughs> so that's about it guys i'm sorry if it was a bit technical i just don't know how else to describe it but i hope for all of you out there who do know a little bit about trucks you appreciate the technicality and i will see you in the next video
And if you have any questions about the overalls, let me know. These, I think I mentioned, are a size medium. Um, they are huge for somebody of my stature. They are huge. So if you're thinking about them, I love them. I just actually ordered a small today, a small regular. Uh, great pair of overalls, but uh, yeah, if you're somebody who's five foot seven and 120 pounds, go for a small. <laughs> Maybe a medium for winter, but that's about it. Thank you for watching, and 